time over the ice sheet, you're going to just increase the supply of meltwater to the bed, and potentially that could escalate the speed up. Their breakthrough solves the mystery of the meltwater lakes. They'd measured it, but because of the fog, they hadn't seen it happen. By sheer chance, the very next morning, Baylog and the scientists would witness it firsthand. About a kilometer away from his camp, a smaller lake that was full only hours before suddenly starts to drain. Baylog heads for the water line to try to find where the water is going. This is the world's most treacherous footing. These wave cups are hard walking as it is, and with them just emerged out of the lake, they're slick as can be. There's, there's so much water packed in there. It's just like grease on top of glass. up here is one of the scariest, dumbest things I've done in my life. Where I'm laying right now was underwater just six hours ago. You know, there was a lake here, and the water depth of the lake was roughly 20 feet right here. And all of that from, that was overhead six hours ago is drained out and poured down this hole. And I can see maybe 250, 300 feet down there. I'm not feeling real comfortable out here. This is really the first time that we've been able to observe these things firsthand actually happening and it's really nice to see that our theories that we've pulled together from our instrumental records match our observations on the ground very nicely. Now they know these billions of liters of water are finding a route under the ice and out to sea, lubricating the outlet glaciers and making them speed up. Das and Jochen calculate that this lubrication effect accounts for about 10% of the increase in speed. So there must be another powerful force behind the surge of ice from Greenland. The latest ocean research may have found it. Around 1997, there was an abrupt 1.6 degrees Celsius jump in coastal water temperatures, exactly when the outlet glaciers began to speed up. At the foot of Jakobshafen Glacier in Disco Bay, Ian Howard is investigating how the ocean could be eating away at the edges of the ice sheet. I'm trying to get a handle on how the ocean and the ice interact. And so by that I mean how heat is transferred from the ocean, which is this huge source of heat, up against this ice sheet. To figure it out, how it is using a capsule packed with sensors that record temperature, salinity, and depth at intervals going down 300 meters to the ocean bed. The measurements give Howard an immediate picture of how the meltwater streaming off the glacier and the denser salt water below stack up like a layer cake. So this plot is showing the increase in temperature with depth. What we see here is very cold, nearly freezing water at the surface and then as we go down it increases its temperature as it mixes with the warmer ocean water below. Howard thinks the rush of cold meltwater coming off the glacier might be creating a vacuum at the carving face that pulls the warm ocean water underneath it, delivering heat directly to the base of the glacier. One hypothesis is that as you increase the melt and you increase the force of this conveyor belt of fresh water going out of the fjord, you're bringing more heat from the ocean into the fjord to melt more ice. And that would be a strong feedback that could actually lead to, to more glacier melting. It's a much more dynamic environment than we've thought in the past. The story of the mountain glaciers and the ice sheets shows that abrupt changes in the ice aren't the exception, they are the rule. There are 
our concerns that we get to some point beyond which strong feedbacks in the climate system kick in and cause changes that we're really unprepared to deal with. The ice may have more surprises to come, but based on the latest research, the best guess for future sea level rise comes down to a simple calculation. In the next hundred years, the oceans will expand on their own as they warm, accounting for about 30 centimeters of sea level rise. Another 30 centimeters will likely come from the loss of the world's mountain glaciers as they melt away. The ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica won't disappear, but their combined melt is expected to add about another 30 centimeters. The total equals an estimated sea level rise approaching one meter in the next hundred years. It may not sound like much, but over 100 million people live within a meter of sea level. Cities around the world will spend trillions building up coastal defenses. Low-lying regions such as Florida, Vietnam and Bangladesh will be devastated. Many island nations will cease to exist. The consequences will test our ability to adapt like never before. But it doesn't stop there. This is going to be one of the pivotal moments in human history. Ice is too important for us in terms of the climate of the planet, in terms of sea level, in terms of the fundamental operating systems of the planet for us to continue to ignore it. The final chapter of Balog's story plays out on the southern coast of Iceland where he discovers an unrivaled confrontation between the ice and the sea. Eight thousand years ago, the island was encased in ice. But now, the last remnant of its ice cap is quickly disappearing. As the ice seeps down towards the sea, it discharges into a meltwater lagoon. Each day, the tide draws the icebergs out into the North Atlantic. I'm not aware of any other place in the world where you can see this dynamic between the ice and the surf in the same way. What I see in this ice is a unique sculpture by nature. Each one is a, a hope diamond, you know, some really perfect, pure manifestation of form and color and texture. They come up here on the waves, they sit here for 12 hours after the tide goes out, then the tide comes back in, takes them away, and they're gone for good. And in that transitoriness, I see extinction. You know, our brains are programmed to think that geology is something that happened a long time ago or will happen a long time in the future. We don't think that that can happen during these little years that we each live on this planet. But the reality is that it does. 